Let's begin by understanding a fundamental constant in geometry pi. Here we have three circles of different sizes, each highlighted in a different color. If we were to unwrap the circumference of each circle into a straight line, we would see that the length of each line represents the circle's circumference, and that each circumference is different. Now let's wrap these lines back into their original circular forms. No matter the size of the circle, the relationship between its circumference and diameter remains consistent. This ratio, the circumference divided by the diameter, is always approximately equal to 3.14. This is the essence of pi, a constant that holds true for all circles regardless of size. Now that we understand what pi represents, let's use it to explore how we can find the area of a circle. We begin with a simple circle drawn here in pink. Imagine inscribing a polygon within this circle. Here we've chosen a polygon with seven sides. Notice how the straight edges of the polygon differ from the smooth curve of the circle. Next, let's fill in the polygon with a light blue color. This helps us focus on the area enclosed by the polygon. At this stage, it's clear that the polygon's area is less than that of the circle. But what happens if we increase the number of sides of the polygon? As we slowly increase the sides, the polygon begins to look more and more like the circle. Notice how both the perimeter and the area of the polygon start to match that of the circle. This process gives us an important insight. As the number of sides of the polygon grows infinitely large, the polygon's perimeter and area approach that of the circle. So here's the final idea of how we'll achieve this. First, we inscribe a polygon within the circle. Next, we cut the polygon into equal congruent triangles. By finding we find the edge length of the polygon using the triangle, then multiply by the number of sides to get the total perimeter. Simultaneously, the area of one triangle and multiplying it by the number of triangles, we get the area of the polygon. Finally, we apply the limit as the number of sides approaches infinity. Solving these equations we arrive at the area of the circle, area equals pi r square. This is how we use limits to find the area of a circle. To prove the area of a circle, we begin by inscribing a regular polygon with n sides inside the circle. Each vertex of the polygon is connected to the center, forming several congruent isosceles triangles. Now let's focus on one of these triangles, triangle OAB. Here O is the center of the circle, and A and B are two consecutive vertices of the polygon. Since the polygon is regular, all these triangles are congruent. The angle at the center, angle AOB, can be calculated as 2 pi by n radians, where n is the number of sides of the polygon. We now introduce the midpoint M of AB and draw the angle bisector OM. This bisector splits angle AOB into two equal parts. Using elementary trigonometry, we can calculate the length of side AB in terms of the radius R of the circle. The length of AB is given by the equation AB equals 2 R sine, pi by n, where R is the radius of the circle. Can you guess how we determine the length of line segment AB using only the radius of the circle and some basic trigonometry? Comment your answer in the comment section below. Next, we calculate the area of triangle OAB. The area is given by the expression, area OAB, equals half into AB into OM. Substituting the values, we get the area as our square sine, pi by n, cos pi by n. Since there are n such triangles in the polygon, the total perimeter of the polygon is 2 r n sine pi by n, and the total area is our square n sine pi by n, cos pi by n. We can simplify the expression for area by substituting the expression for the perimeter. This gives us the relationship area equals p n by 2, r cos pi by n. As we increase the number of sides n, the polygon becomes more and more like the circle. In the limit, as n approaches infinity, cos pi by n, approaches 1, perimeter approaches the circumference of the circle. Substituting the values, we get area of circle is pi r square. Hence, we have proved that the area of a circle is indeed pi r square. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. Have any questions or thoughts? Drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. See you in the next one.